Welcome engineers. My name is Travis IQ and today we'll be installing the connected alarm panel pro. But first we need to understand what we are removing. I'm removing the original connected board as well as a six zone extender. As I mentioned in my connected pro unboxing video, the pro version has 12 zones built in. Uh, we can therefore configure my entire home sensor network to just this one board instead of having that extended board from the old connected board. The only thing left to do is make sure that we have uh, know, that we know which sensors are wired to which zones uh, on the original board. And so that's what we have behind us here is a configuration.yaml file for my home automation solution. I use a home, auto, home automation utility known as Home Assistant. So what I will do is make note of each of these zones, sensor types, and location, and location descriptions, and then make sure that they match the sensor type and location description on the board before I pull the sensors out and put them into my new board. Um, then you would say, well, Travis, shouldn't they all be labeled, right? Uh, they are labeled down there because I installed them. But if someone else installed your old home automation solution or your old home alarm system or someone else installed a new a connected board and you're replacing an, a, a connected board with a new pro, then you may not have the documentation that you that would be satisfactory to you. Um, I would say it's probably pretty likely that documentation isn't as good as you would like it to be. That is just always the case. So we're going to check, double check and then make sure that we have everything right once we've got it installed. That being said, let's go take a look. So what I first need to do is prep the original connected board and extender board for the transition over to my connected pro. I'm powering the boards down by removing the power cable. I can then remove the Wi-Fi module and unmount the boards from the security box they are mounted in to make them easier to work with when transitioning over the sensor wires. Next, I'll start to transition the wires over from the original board to the connected pro. I started with the power wires. You may notice I actually wire the positive and the negative backwards. I'll fix this in a minute when we start troubleshooting some of the setup issues. But for now, this is where I started. I then go one by one, uh, pulling the zones out of the original board and securing them in the connected pro board. Because I had less than 12 zones, I found it pretty easy to just take zone one on the original board and secure it to zone one on the pro board and then work my way down the line, zone two to zone two and, and so on. The ground wires for the old board versus the connected pro were a little bit different, but really nothing to be too concerned about considering only you know 10 to 12 zones were in my case. Um, but if you had more zones, you might wanna be a little bit more cognizant of these, these facts. Um, this also helped me because it wired the zones directly to my original YAML config, and so the file corresponded exactly to the zones on the pro board. You may be saying to yourself, well, what about the zones on the extended board? Those start back at one again. With just a few additional zones though, it's relatively easy for me to take and make a note in the YAML file that board two, zone one, will now correspond to zone seven, and board two, zone two, will now correspond to zone eight. Uh, if you're looking carefully, you might also note I actually have 10 zones wired, but I'm only talking about eight. Now, the reason for this is I have 10 pairs wired at the security box, but only eight pairs actually have sensors on the other end. And I figured I would wire the last two pairs up in case I find a use for them in the future. Finally, just some practical notes. I found it easiest just to stick the old boards straight to the wall while I was moving the wires over to the new board. This just made it easy and much less hassle. I'm sure you could mount them more securely or not transition the wires directly over, but this made the most sense to me. Also, uh, the little Phillips flathead screwdriver that came with the Connected Pro worked just fine on both boards for removing and securing the wires in place. Okay, now let's talk about some of the issues that I ran into. Okay, so we got the new Connected Board Pro installed. As you can see, it's kind of mounted sideways like this. Probably one of the bigger issues that I've seen, or one of the smaller issues I suppose that I've seen with the Connected Board and the mounts and things like this, is that yeah, the sticks, the stickies don't work very well. The, the back plate stick, the back plate plastic like stick to the board that you mount the board on, they just don't, they just don't stick very well. Um, and that just happened with the connected, the first version of the Connected Board, also happened with this version of the Connected Board. You might say, well, Travis, um, it's stuck inside, you know, one of the metal cases, and so the metal cases don't have don't stick to it so well. Well, this is probably where it's going to be mounted the entire time, right? For almost everybody. So, uh, if that's where it's going to be mounted, then probably you should have a better 
better mechanism for mounting the thing. Uh, a couple of problem issues that I ran into. One was um, I had accidentally plugged it into a PoE switch and also had it plugged in at the same time. Didn't affect anything from a power perspective. May have affected it pulling an IP address. May have affected the Ethernet interface to some extent because it didn't pull an IP address when I first plugged it in. I just got a blue uh, solid light and that blue solid light um, after doing a little bit of research is an indicator that, and, and no green light, right, for a status indicator is, is an indicator that it didn't pull an IP address when it was plugged in via the Ethernet interface. Um, so the way, that we, the way that we remedied this was uh, pressing our little reboot button um, and holding it for five to 10 seconds. I also noticed that if you only hold it for one to two seconds, then you're gonna have a problem. So there you go. Um, and then finally, we had some issues with the new connected board with the old uh, Home Assistant software. So I don't um, update my software, I don't update my Home Assistant very regularly in terms of like firmware updates, um, which is good and bad. I mean, I just don't feel like breaking things and messing around with it in my home environment. But um, there was an issue with the connected Pro Board integration with the old Home Assistant um, with the old Home Assistant versions. So I've created from 10.0.x to 11.0.x, um, and that fixed the problem in the sense that Home Assistant recognized the Connected Board Pro and had like a little walkthrough integration, which was great. Uh, the, the problem for me was, is I already had a connected setup with zones and zone labels and things like this. It didn't read it from my YAML file. I actually had to go back and relabel it with their drop-down menus and with their uh, paned walkthrough, which is okay, right? But still not ideal. I'd rather have it just integrate directly with the YAML file that I had with the zones. I just pulled out um, a couple of the zones um, from the second board and then integrated it with the new board, right? Made it zones one through six and then seven and eight instead of one through six and one through six because it wasn't two boards anymore. Um, but you know, such is life. Um, and then the only other thing is if you'll notice, if you look at, let's see if we can zoom in here. You'll notice that I actually flipped the black and the red wire pairs, right? When I put a uh, multimeter across it, I had negative 12 volts, which is not good for the devices that needed power, things like motion sensors and glass break detectors. And so when I when I went into my panel uh, in the in the Home Assistant software, the things that were recognizing would be things like doors, door sensors that didn't require power, and things that weren't working were things that required power. Again, like glass break sensors and motion sensors. So. We troubleshot a little bit, decided that we had flipped the pairs, came back down here, flipped them back, and now everything works great. The last thing to do is make an alarm panel um, and integrate all the sensors in an, in an alarm panel and start an alarm. Okay, so we are here in my Home Assistant configuration tab. Um, I know this isn't a, a Home Assistant tutorial, but I did want to show that once the connected Pro Board pulls an IP address, it should show up under your integration. So if you go into the configuration tab in the bottom left here and integrations it should show up and then you know you can identify the device walk through the uh, the pain walkthrough for setting up of um, motion sensors and glass breaks and these types of things um, it should be fairly intuitive again not a home assistant tutorial but i did want to show that mine showed up in the home assistant config and integrations pane pretty pretty simply that being said as is always the case engineer break stuff and have fun. If you like the video, give it a like and comment below if you have any questions. I, sh I should have some other troubleshooting issues solved for you by the time you have any questions about it. Let me know.